All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is being recorded on Friday, whatever the fuck it is, Friday, March 4th. It's March 4th, which means it's combine day for running backs. Um, I think they're getting ready to run the 40 as I speak two days ago when you're watching this right now. So as we are, you know, kind of being inundated with, you know, takes about these 2022 rookie running backs. Today, I'm going to look at the 2023 rookie running back class just very shortly. Mike on the channel, like probably like two weeks ago now, made some throwaway comment on one of his videos talking about like, this is a relatively weak class. That's supposed to be a strong class. What if you traded like a mid first in this year's rookie draft for a random 2023 first, like how viable of a strategy is that? I think Mike ended up concluding um, that it just wasn't like you probably don't want to do that. Don't quote me on that. I don't actually remember. But it got me thinking in the context of like how good that 2023 rookie running back class is supposed to be. Would that actually be like a viable strategy? Would you trade the 104 for a random 2023 first? And if it's the 108, you know, 110, like, are you fucked? Have you improved your position? So yeah. I kind of looked at the 2023 rookie running back class with that in mind, and I'm going to sort of evaluate the top guys in that class. So let's do it. All right, the number one guy is definitely Bijan Robinson. He's been the number one Devi running back for like a year now. I'm supposed to be like the Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor level prospect. Let's kind of dive into his profile. He goes to Texas. He was listed at six foot two fourteen this last year based on um, historical data. He'll probably be like six foot two nineteen at the combine. And he's pretty athletic. According to playerprofiler.com, he only ran a four seven seven in high school, which is obviously not very good. He has been tracked at twenty one point six miles per hour on the field on some long runs in college, um, which generally translates to right around a low to mid 4-4 in the 40-yard dash. Um, that's according to Fusu Vu on Twitter, as well as Big Wide Receiver Guy on Twitter. That's his at, Big Wide Receiver Guy. Both those guys do a lot of smart work with player tracking and converting those times to 40s and stuff, so good resource there. And then his uh, high school vertical leap was 36 inches, actually 37 inches, which would be 80th percentile at the combine, so super Super fast, explosive. If he runs low 4-4s four at 220 pounds, he's going to be in the range like Clinton Portis, Matt Forte, Lamar Miller, like these, you know, good size speed guys. Um, from a production standpoint, he's also been pretty good. Um, he had right around 900 yards and six touchdowns as a true freshman. 17% dominator rating that year. That's a 66th percentile number for true freshman running backs. If you kind of look at true freshman dominator ratings on teams of like a similar quality as Texas has been in the Big 12, the most comparable freshman seasons to B. John Robinson's freshman season are Chris Warren, Charles Sims, and Malcolm Brown, which, you know, not an incredibly, like, astonishing group of players. Um, as a sophomore, he upped his production quite a bit. He had 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns, a 33% dominator rating, which is an 86th percentile number for true sophomores. And using kind of that same comparison, like, dominator rating, level of program in the Big 12, the most comparable sophomore seasons among players drafted since 2007 are Adrian Peterson, number one, Brees Hall, number two, and David Montgomery, number three. So decent freshman year, really, really good sophomore year. He did break out that true freshman year. His breakout age is 18.6, which is an 89th percentile number. So really quality production profile so far. He's like right on track for what we would want. And he's a really good receiver. He's averaged 26 receptions per 12 games. So basically per season since coming into college, that's an 85th percentile number. Target share in the 68th percentile. And he's been used really dynamic. Um, he's been split out wide 13% of the time. That's 75th percentile for running backs. And he's being targeted downfield. His A dot average depth of target is 0.7 yards, which is 64th percentile. And on those advanced targets, you know, he's lining up places other than just the backfield, being targeted downfield. He has an 84th percentile catch rate of 85%, which is really nice. And just kind of like bird's eye view receiving efficiency, he's averaging 10.2 yards per target, which is in the 89th percentile. So upper percentile in like usage, role, 
and efficiency as a receiver. I think he's really good there. As a rusher, he's been good, but not great, I would say. Kind of how I want to contextualize his rushing performance is volume. Um, I'm going to compare his efficiency to his teammates, so like how good are those teammates, and the box counts that he was facing relative to those teammates. Volume, not incredibly high. 177 carries per 12 games, which is right there in like Ronald Jones, Mark Ingram territory. The running backs on his team collectively have averaged 3.21 stars as high school recruits. That's a weighted average, and that's right at average. Uh, That's in the 50th percentile. He's actually seen slightly lighter box counts than the other guys on his team have on average. Negative 0.04 defenders in the box compared to what they've been seeing, which is a 40th percentile number. And on that volume, relative to those 50th percentile teammates, with slightly easier like path to efficiency given the box counts he's been facing, he averaged 0.67 yards per carry more than the other guys on his team, which is in the 56th percentile. So relative to like average teammates, he has an easier path to his efficiency than they do. He's just above average. Not great. Um, his 10-yard run rate is almost 2% higher than theirs. That's a 61st percentile number. So kind of in the same range. If you just kind of like isolate things to kind of like honing in on what he's doing, you know, ignoring his teammates. He's breaking 0.38 tackles per attempt, which would be second in the last two draft classes to Javante Williams. So he's a really good tackle breaker. And once he gets to the open field, he's pretty damn good. He's turning 42% of his 10-yard runs into breakaways of 20 yards or more. That's a 92nd percentile number. And if you account for the box counts that he's facing... The average carry for Bijan Robinson is worth 116% the output of a random carry for any other Texas running back during his time on campus, which is in the 60th percentile. But he's been fairly inconsistent relative to those guys. Accounting for the box counts, his success rate relative to his teammates is 4% lower, which is in the 20th percentile. So he's this great big play runner breaking tackles, good out in space. Obviously, you know, he's a good receiver. So his his overall efficiency is slightly better than his teammates, but his consistency is not. So I think he has a little bit of that, like, Saquon to him where, you know, Saquon dances around a lot, creates a lot of big plays, but it results in some negative plays as well. I think the Bijan comps are pretty apt in that way. And I think the bottom line for Bijan is that he's got good size, great athleticism, dynamic receiver, Dynamic runner also, but with some boom bust. Like I said, the Saquon comps, I think, are pretty spot on in a good way and a bad way. He's my RB1 in that class, but I'm going to have to, like, pump the brakes a little bit on the B. John Robinson generational talent, best running back since, you know, Jonathan Taylor, LaDainian Tomlinson type thing. I'm just not there with him. I think he's more... Joe Mixon, not as a comp, but like that level of prospect, you know, Joe Mixon, Marshawn Lynch, I don't know, Brees Hall even, I think he's more in their territory than he is in like the Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley tier, which is good, but it's just not quite, I think, what people are expecting out of him. So RB1, not quite as good as I probably expected when I went into digging into his profile. Okay, the second guy I want to talk about is Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama. He actually just transferred to Alabama. He's played at Georgia Tech in the ACC the last two seasons. He's been listed at 5'11 and 200 pounds um, at Georgia Tech, which is pretty tall and small for that size of frame. At the combine, I predict him to be about 5'10, 209, which would be in like Jarek McKinnon, Aaron Jones, kind of J.K. Dobbins range. So I anticipate he'll be a little bit denser at the combine than he's been so far in his college career. And And he's been tracked at 20.9 miles an hour, so about half a mile an hour slower than uh, Robinson, which would put him right around like sub 4.5, probably high 4.4s. And if he runs mid to high 4.4s at 210 pounds, he's right there with like Dalvin Cook, Daryl Henderson, Miles Sanders as far as like size adjusted speed goes. So, you know, that would be very, very solid production. Maybe even better than Bijan Robinson. He only played seven games as a freshman, but he had 763 yards, seven touchdowns in those seven games for a 30% dominator rating, which is in the 93rd percentile for true freshmen. And, you know, again, that comparison we did with Bijan Robinson, the most similar ACC true freshman seasons to Jameer Gibbs' true freshman season are AJ Dillon, James Davis, and Duke Johnson. So some really solid names popping up there. And then as a sophomore, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, 23% dominator rating. It's in the 62nd percentile. The most comparable seasons to that are Cam Akers, Javian Hawkins, and Andre Williams. So some more good names. And he broke out at 18.4. He's a pretty young guy. That's a 93rd percentile breakout age. So really nice. Um, he's been just a really solid producer so far. And he's probably an even better receiver than Bijan Robinson is. 
He's been used quite a bit there. 37 receptions per 12 games. That's in the 96th percentile. 14.1% target share, 87th percentile. He has not been split out wide as much as Bijan has, only about 5% of the time, just in the 26th percentile. But 0.6 A dot, 60th percentile. Catch rate of 83%, 76th percentile. And 10.9 yards per target in the 93rd percentile. So he's not being moved out of the backfield a ton, but he's catching the ball downfield, catching a a large percent of his passes and being really efficient on his targets. So, and he's just being used a ton. Like he was the offense at Georgia Tech. Really dynamic receiver, um, really prolific actually there. And as a rusher, really disappointing actually. I was excited about Jameer Gibbs, especially after seeing his, you know, production and receiving profiles. Disappointing as a runner. I'll kind of cover those contextual elements before getting into his efficiency numbers. He has been like pretty lightly used, only 147 carries per 12 games. That's below average. The other running backs on his team are a little bit below average as well. 3.11 stars as high school recruits. That's in the 47th percentile. And he's seen substantially fewer defenders in the box than they have. 0.16 lower, which is in the 14th percentile. So he's had quite an easy route to his team relative efficiency. And despite that ease of travel, he's only produced 0.08 yards per carry greater than they have, which is in the 32nd percentile. And his 10-yard run rate is barely better than those than theirs as well, but only in the 46th percentile. So he's below average in both yards per carry and chunk rate relative to his teammates. Despite his teammates being below average, he has received fairly low volume compared to like NFL quality running backs, and he's seeing lighter box counts than his teammates have. He's also a tackle breaker, 0.3 missed tackles forced per attempt. That's right there with like Zach Moss, Najee Harris, Todd Gurley, and he's also a big play runner. He's converted a third of his 10-yard runs into 20-yard runs. That's a 61st percentile number, but box adjusted efficiency rating 102%. That's in the 21st percentile, and relative success rate is actually lower than his teammates by almost a percent, which is in the 36th percentile. So not good. So far through two seasons, Jameer Gibbs has been a really good producer, a really good receiver, not a very good runner. Um, I've seen some like Aaron Jones comps for him. I think he's a lot more Kyron Williams than he is Aaron Jones. Kyron Williams today was 194 pounds at the combine. I would not anticipate Gibbs being 194 pounds, but as far as like the kind of player he is, I see him much more as like a third down threat rather than a, you know, like an undersized, complete, you know, workhorse back. I'm not sure he has that in him. We'll see at Alabama if he can kind of up his game and, uh, you know, kind of put some better things on wax that would indicate that he can be like a quality running back in the NFL, or at least a quality runner of the football in the NFL. But so far, I just, I just don't see it. I think he's pretty raw as a runner. He's obviously athletic and dynamic, but I'm not seeing it there as a runner quite yet. So the third guy I want to talk about is Tank Bigsby from Auburn. He's been listed at six foot 208, um, which is pretty solid size at the combine. He's probably going to be right around six foot 216, um, which would be nice. I'm um, in high school. He ran four five five in the 40, jumped 35 inches in the vert. Those would both be above average for guys at the combine, and he did it in high school. And if he's running, you know, four five at around 215 pounds at the combine, he's going to be like of requisite size, of requisite speed. That's like no Sean Moreno, Travis Etienne range. Will not have any problems with his like physical profile or athletic athletic ability. As a producer, he's been pretty good. He had 900 yards and five touchdowns as a true freshman at Auburn, 22% dominator rating in the 81st percentile compared to other like true freshmen in the SEC. Isaiah Spiller actually with the most comparable true freshman season, then Kevin Harris, another guy in this class, and Mark Ingram. And then as a sophomore, almost 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns, 25% dominator rating, 69th percentile. Isaiah Spiller pops up in those uh, production comps again, along with Arian Foster and LaMichael P. Ryan. And that true freshman year was a breakout season. He broke out at 19, which is in the 80th percentile. So another really solid producer. As a receiver, he's not even close to on the level of guys like Gibbs and Robinson. I think he's proven that he can catch the ball a little bit. He's averaged 17 receptions per 12 games, which is in the 59th percentile. But his target share, just 6%. That's a 21st percentile number. And kind of strangely, he's been split out wide almost 10% of the time, which is above the 60th percentile. But he's catching passes behind the line of scrimmage. Negative 1.6 A dot. So I don't know if they're just like lining him up out there, you know, out wide. He just catching like a wide receiver screen or something. But that's a 13th percentile A dot. And he's not catching that many of his passes, just 75% of them. That's in the 46th percentile. 
and he's averaging just 6.4 yards per target, which is also in the 45th percentile. So slightly below average efficiency in just like catching the ball and producing yards when he's throwing the ball. Lining up out wide fairly often, but catching passes backwards, probably not quite there as a receiver yet. We'll see if he does that um, as a junior, but right now he's just not quite there. As a runner, he's had a decent workload, um, 188 carries per 12 games, which is 30 carries above the average. His running back teammates have averaged 3.07 stars as high school recruits, a little bit below average, and he's seen slightly higher box counts than they have, just 52nd percentile, but he's basically seeing the same amount of defenders in the box that they have, but he's actually been less efficient than they have. Negative 0.28 yards per carry than theirs. That's in the 19th percentile, and that's despite a 10-yard run rate that's 1% higher than theirs, which is just in the 50th percentile, but it's positive. Um, He's a tackle breaker as well. 0.26 missed tackles forced per attempt, right there with like Chris Carson, Alvin Kamara, uh, Cam Akers. And he's really not that much of a big play guy. 29.8% breakaway conversion rate, 45th percentile. And if you look at the box counts, um, the average carry for Tank Bigsby worth just 102% of the output of the other guys in the team, which is positive again, but just 20th percentile. But he's been more consistent than them. 2.3% relative success rate, 55th percentile. And going back to that breakaway conversion rate of, you know, 30%, which is below average in the 45th percentile. I didn't mention a miles per hour for Tank Bigsby, which I hit up my guy on Twitter, a big wide receiver guy, looking to see if he had miles per hour numbers for Tank Bigsby. And he said he didn't because in order to have miles per hour numbers, you need to have these long runs where guys are just running kind of like unimpeded for a time where you can analyze frame by frame yard line to yard line, like how fast is this guy getting from the 30 to the 40 and then convert that to miles per hour. And Bigsby just doesn't have any of those plays. He literally unable to find a play where he's just running straight in the open field and therefore able to like generate miles per hour for him. He doesn't have that. So that's not a great sign. Like he might be fast, but if he's not even giving himself opportunities to use his speed, not really a good look. So it's possible that he's like one of these sort of like plotter types. Um, That's kind of what I'm seeing in the numbers, like less efficient overall than his teammates, not creating big plays, a little bit more consistent than they are. He might be like plugging away, you know, like four yards in a cloud of dust, but not much more than that. Uh, Not super interesting. Um, He's got solid size, you know, good production, not quite there as a receiver. I think not quite there as a runner. He's pretty one dimensional anyway. And it just so happens like this is another Auburn guy, but he his profile looks really similar to Cadillac Williams to me, um, which is a little bit of a deep pull. Cadillac Williams came into the NFL back in 2004. He was a top five pick in that like Ronnie Brown, Cedric Benson year. You know, all those guys were going like top 10. And he was a productive guy from Alabama, pretty much the same size. He also wasn't very efficient relative to his teammates. He also wasn't very involved in the passing game. This is like Cadillac Williams reborn to me. And it's possible like Cadillac Williams came into the league, ran for a thousand yards as a rookie, kind of flamed out after that because of like some injuries and like ineffectiveness. Not totally out of the question for Tank Bigsby, you know, to, I know he's got a lot of hype. I'm not sure how NFL teams feel about him, but like I know Devi guys and like dynasty people have been looking forward to him for a couple of years now. He might just be overrated. So that's kind of, kind of my take on Tank Bigsby. Next is Sean Tucker out of Syracuse. This is a, a guy who's going a little bit more under the radar, but probably shouldn't be. He was listed at 5'10", 210. He's probably going to be right right around there at the combine. I project like 212. But he's been timed at 21.1 miles an hour, so probably sub 4'5 speed. That would put him right there with like Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift as far as like size speed combo goes. And he's been really, really productive. Um, As a true freshman at Syracuse, keep in mind, so like not a very good program. Um, He went for 700 yards and four touchdowns as a freshman, 27% dominator rating, which is in the 90th percentile. And if you look at those comps for like ACC true freshmen, James Davis, Duke Johnson, AJ Dillon, kind of the same comps in a different order as Jameer Gibbs had. And then his sophomore season this last year just completely blew up. Uh, 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns, 39% dominator rating. It's in the 93rd percentile. His sophomore season production comps, James Conner, Jonathan Dwyer, Dalvin Cook, just really, really good. And he broke out at 18.9, which is an 84th percentile number. As a receiver, he's a little bit like touch and go. 16 receptions per 12 games, which is solid. 9.5% target share in the 58th percentile. He's been split out wide about 11% of the time, which is a 68th percentile number. And his A dot of 0.2 is a little bit below average. 
but he has not been good just like catching the ball. He has a 62% catch rate, which is a fifth percentile number. Those are like, that's like a Kenneth Walker number. He just has like stone hands, but he's averaging 8.6 yards per target, which is in the 79th percentile. So dude can't catch, but has really strong efficiency as a receiver, which is weird, but his yak per reception, yards after the catch per reception is 14.2, which is 97th percentile. So he's one of these like Tyler Algiers a little bit like this. Fairly low catch rate, um, not being used super dynamically, but really high yak numbers that are fueling receiving efficiency. So I don't think that Sean Tucker is a strong receiver. I think that he's being put out in space catching the ball every once in a while and then just like running by dudes, trucking corners, whatever it is in order to gain his yards as a pass catcher. So, you know, screen plays, little swing passes, things like that, dump offs, check downs. And he's just like making things happen with the ball in his hands. As a runner, uh, we kind of see that ability that he showed in Yak just as a ball carrier, like the dude's nuts. 219 carries per 12 games. That's 87th percentile. We're not comparing him to very strong teammates here. 2.72 stars as high school recruits. That's sub 30th percentile. But he did see um, greater box counts than they did in the 55th percentile. But he's been really efficient. 0.8 yards per carry greater than theirs, which is 62nd percentile. His 10-yard run rate is just a little bit higher than theirs, 51st percentile. And he's not much of a tackle breaker, just a little bit above average. Not a huge big play guy, 30%. That's in the 43rd percentile. 30% breakaway conversion rate in the 43rd percentile, but accounting for the box counts that he saw relative to those guys, you know, he saw slightly greater box counts than the other guys on his team. The average carry for Sean Tucker has been worth 135% the output of other Syracuse running backs, which is 90th percentile, and his relative success rate is 14% higher than the other guys on the team, which is absolutely nuts. It's the highest in my entire database. Kenneth Walker was second highest in this class, 9.3. Damian Pierce was the highest in this class, 9.4%. Sean Tucker is almost 5% higher than theirs at 14%. Nuts. You know, he's got decent size, good speed, great production. I think he's involved, but like pretty limited as a receiver, but he's a very, very good runner. Basically, his profile is if Kenneth Walker broke out as a freshman and was actually involved in the passing game, like he'd be Sean Tucker. They're basically the same size, very similar runners. I think Kenneth Walker is a little bit more dynamic as far as like out in space and a big play guy. You know, he breaks a little bit more tackles and creates more big plays. But as far as like just raw consistency and efficiency relative to their teammates, Sean Tucker is right there with Kenneth Walker, beating him in some aspects. And he's involved in the passing game where Walker has not been. So Sean Tucker's a better version of what Kenneth Walker is this year. I I really like him. The last guy I want to talk about is Zach Evans, um, who's actually going to go to Ole Miss this next year, but has been at TCU um, his freshman and sophomore seasons. He's listed at 5'11", 212, probably going to be like 215 at the Combine, and in high school, 4'5", 1 in the 40, which would be 70th percentile for NFL running backs at the Combine. Um, He ran 20.7 miles an hour in high school, um, which converts to like 4'5"-ish, so pretty consistent speed there. His short shuttle in high school is 3.91 seconds, which would be the fastest number for running backs at the combine since 2009. And he had a 34 inch vert in high school, which would be slightly below average for NFL players. But again, he did it as like a 17, 18 year old kid. So, you know, solid size, really good athleticism. Production, a little bit interesting. He hasn't even played that much. Freshman season was only like nine games, partially because of COVID, and I think he missed one game. But 500 yards, four touchdowns as a freshman, 13% dominator rating, which is just above average in the 53rd percentile. But among like Big 12 running backs, closest comps as a producer, Brandon Jackson, Mike Goodson, Tristan Ebner. So, you know, nothing crazy there. Then as a sophomore, he actually only played six games last year. But in those six games, almost 800 yards, six touchdowns, 30% dominator rating, which is in the 81st percentile. And among like historical Big 12 running backs, the most comparable true sophomore seasons are David Montgomery, Kendall Hunter, and Darren Sproles. So some really solid NFL guys there. And he broke out that second season, 20.3. It's in the 57th percentile. He's also a decent receiver, 14 receptions per 12 games in the 48th percentile, so a little bit below average. Target share also a little bit below average, 7.8%, that's 37th percentile, but he's been used pretty dynamically. He's been split out 26% of the time, either out wide or in the slot. It's a 92nd percentile number. Um, His A dot is 2.7, so he's catching passes not just in front of the line of scrimmage, but like significantly downfield for a running back. That's an 88th percentile number. And his catch rate is in the 43rd percentile at just 75%. But if you're being split out wide 
a quarter of the time and you're catching your passes three yards downfield and your catch rate is still in the 43rd percentile relative to guys who largely are catching swing passes, you know, half a yard behind the line of scrimmage just after lining up as a running back. Like, I'll take that catch rate. Like, that's fine. The degree of difficulty on his targets is significantly higher than most running backs. So the fact that he's only barely below average there, I think is not a bad thing at all. And he's been efficient on his targets overall. 8.6 yards per target, 79th percentile. So pretty nice. As a runner, still low volume, about 117 touches per 12 games. That's right there in just like committee back range. And he hasn't played with great teammates. 2.44 um, stars as high school recruits. That's in the 21st percentile. And he's seen lower box counts than theirs. I think part of that is like he's a dynamic receiver. He's playing on passing downs. And so not a ton of situations where guys are stacking the box, but you know, something to keep in mind as far as evaluating his rushing efficiency numbers. But those rushing efficiency numbers are really, really good. He's averaged 1.8 yards per carry greater than his teammates, which is in the 91st percentile. His 10-yard run rate is 6.57% higher than theirs, 90th percentile. His breakaway conversion rate, absolutely nuts, 44.8%. That's 96th percentile. He's also a tackle breaker, 0.27 missed tackles forced per attempt, right there with like Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt, Alvin Kamara. He's legit. And box adjusted efficiency rating, 137%, 93rd percentile, relative success rate, 5% higher than his teammates, 80th percentile. He is just sick as a runner. It's been low volume as both a runner and receiver, but he's been tremendous, you know, in both areas. The whole Zach Evans profile is pretty like low volume. He hasn't played that many games. He's seen like not that many touches in both the passing game or the running game, but I think based on that small sample, like he looks like the most complete back in the class, like even more than Bijan Robinson. He's a more efficient runner there. He's a more consistent runner. He's just as good of an open field runner. He's got size. He's got athleticism. He's being used dynamically as a receiver. He's efficient as a receiver. He's super efficient as a runner. And now at Ole Miss, he'll have the opportunity to prove it in the SEC. So I'm really excited to see what Zach Evans does. If he's able to like prove it in the SEC, on higher volume against better competition, he might be my RB1 in the class over Bijan Robinson. But, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see about that. Um, he's he's got to do it first. But kind of an overview. I want Those are the five guys I wanted to talk about. Um, kind of an overview of the class. Like, there's legitimate RB1 level prospects like Sean Tucker, Zach Evans, Bijan Robinson, I think all count. Guys like Tank Bigsby and Jameer Gibbs, I think are pretty underwhelming as of now. And they're part of this like 2023 running back class that's supposed to be legendary. Like, they're some of the like RB1, no doubt guys that are supposed to be coming next year. I don't know that I would take either Jameer Gibbs or Tank Bigsby in the first round if my rookie draft happened today. Like, I, I don't think I would do it. There's a couple other notable guys like Zach Charbonnet was supposed to come out this year, ended up going back to school. Um, this kid from Michigan, Blake Corum. This kid from Central Michigan, Lou Nichols, who's been really productive. They've all been like fairly underwhelming when I looked at them. There's a couple other guys that I'm excited about. I'm not sure how you say his name. It's Tyon or Tion Evans. I think he's going to be good. Uh, Devin A. Chain from Texas A&M is going to be good. Uh, Deuce Vaughn is tiny, but I think is He's probably the best running back in college football. He might not be the best running back prospect given his size, but he's the best player out of all these guys. Deuce Vaughn is absolutely incredible. He's really, really good. Devin A. Chain, super dynamic. He's going to be skinny as well. He looks like a Jamal Charles like type guy. I'm not sure he's that level, but body type, play style, he looks like Jamal Charles to me. You probably won't have to spend a first round pick to get any of those three on your team, but I think they're more interesting than some of these like Tank Bixby types. So I'd be keeping an eye out for them. Bringing this all back to like the question of should you trade a 2022 first for a random 2023 first, I'm going to go with no. I think the class is strong next year. I think it's a little overrated. I think Bijan Robinson's a little overrated. I think Tank Bigsby and Jameer Gibbs are over, are overrated. And I think those guys represent a strong core of the class. And all three of them are a little bit overrated. Bijan's still good. I'm not even sure that Gibbs and Bigsby are going to be like solid NFL like fantasy contributors. So I would not be selling my 2022-106 for a random 2023 first. Um, I'd be definitely trying to acquire seconds and thirds. I think like Deuce Vaughn, Devin A. Chain, Tion Evans, those guys are going to be available, you know, probably second round. So that's where I would be looking to take my shots. If you can acquire 2023 seconds, 2023 thirds, like relatively cheap right now. I, I don't know what the market for those looks like, but that's where I, what I would be targeting. So this kind of just was an excuse for me to talk about the 2023 class. I've been focusing a lot on, you know, the 2022 rookies, but yeah, looking forward. I'm uh, excited for this class, excited for some of the like under the radar guys. Don't trade your 2022 first for 2023 first. The class ain't all that. <laughs> <laughs>
thanks for for checking out the video I think I'll probably do like a uh, rookie running back comps coming up in the next video we'll have combine numbers we'll have height and weight measurements um, we'll be able to put like comprehensive comps together for these guys touch on some of the more interesting like combine performances coming this Wednesday so until then peace